Spearfishing is an exciting and intoxicating sport for those that decide to catch their fish under the water. It doesn't matter what skill level you are or your age, or whether you're fishing for craze, abalone, or something much bigger and more mobile. Or maybe you're just starting out with a hand spear. There are still certain safety factors that must be followed. When you first take up spear fishing, there are so many things you don't even think about. Your basic preparation, whether to go it alone or with others. Knowing the conditions, and the big one, proper breathing. That's why instructors like myself spend a lot of time drilling a few key facts into Spiro's heads and recommend that if you're serious about your spearfishing, you should get serious about the safety as well. Let's start with breathing. Breathing is the first thing we do when we're born and the last thing we do before we die. None of us is really aware of the way we breathe, let alone practice it knowingly or awarely. Most of us don't even think about breathing, but when we go free diving or spearfishing, we have to stop. When we breathe, we inhale oxygen, use this oxygen to provide energy for our muscles, and then we exhale waste products such as CO2. Most people think that if they inhale deeply and breathe up a long time before they dive, will give them a longer bottom time. But that's not really the case. Overbreathing or hyperventilation is one of the main contributors to diving-related accidents, such as loss of motor control or SAMBA, or even a blackout. Yeah, bring the bite, mate. Bring the bite. By hyperventilating or breathing excessively before the dive, we purge the CO2 and we get rid of too much of it. CO2 is the main triggering mechanism for our breathing. Once we remove this mechanism, towards the end of the dive, our body is fooled into thinking that it has more oxygen than it actually really has. This might lead to a blackout. Another common myth is that if you breathe out during a dive, you'll have a few more seconds on the bottom. This is not true. When you breathe out, you breathe out oxygen, and this oxygen is needed for the brain to operate. When we get back to the surface, another way of reducing the risk of a samba is by proper breathing. Avoid breathing forcefully. Avoid blowing your nose. And avoid any strenuous activity for the first 10 to 20 seconds. Passively exhale, and then take a deep breath. Once the air is in, Hold it for a split second. Then again, passively exhale, good inhale, and hook the air in. Passive again, and hold. Repeat the process for three or four times until you feel recovered. A shallow water blackout or a samba might not have any warning signs, and the diver might get to the surface, black out, without feeling anything. But in some cases, the diver might feel some fatigue tingling sensations, either in his fingers or in the lips. He might feel changes in his vision or any signs or any feeling of being unfocused, for example. These are just a few of the signs we should look out for. But always remember, the most important thing is diving well within your limits. What's wrong with the scales because he's under. He's easily five or six kilos. No, Aquila under. Let's talk about equalization for a few minutes. Equalization is actually one of uh, the biggest limiting factors for uh, Spiros and freedivers. As we begin our descent, pressure increases and the volume of the air spaces in our body begin to uh, decrease. Failure to equalize on time 
will result in damage to your eardrum. Equalization should be performed as soon as you feel the slightest pressure in your ears. Never go into pain. If you have pain in your ears, it means that you've gone too far. Equalize by pinching your nose and blowing into it. As soon as you feel the ears pop, stop pushing. To equalize the mask, simply push air into it once you finish equalizing. In order to avoid any damage to your ears, never equalize on a scent. Never dive when you're sick or feeling unwell. Never dive with earplugs as they prevent proper equalization. And if you dive with a hood, make sure you have some water in it. Carrying too much weight will mean that it's going to be harder for us to swim up to the surface, even though it's going to be very easy to get down to the bottom. Now, the amount of weight that we're going to use depends on the depth in which we're going to spear. But to be on the safe side, we want to be positively buoyant on the surface at all times. To check if our buoyancy is correct, we'll use this experiment. Stand in the water and take a deep breath. The water level should be at around your chest. Then, passively exhale the air and see what happens. You should draw down a little bit and the water level should be around your forehead. If you sink below the surface on a passive exhale, you're carrying too much weight. If you're still very high above the water, even after a passive exhale, you're carrying too little weight and you can add a little bit more. Of course, proper breathing is critical to the success of your dive and your safety. But there are a lot of other safety issues that people tend to neglect, and they're the basic ones, such as carrying a float and a flag. Using a flag attached to a float is so important for spear fishing. You need to be highly visible, not just to your buddies, but to other water users, like people driving jet skis, yachts, and boats, who may not see you without having something clearly visible in the water. So use a flag and keep your float big and bright. A dive float also gives you something to hang on to if you need a rest. You can hang your catch off it and even supplies like food and water can be put on your float. After years of spearfishing and competing around the world, the biggest bit of safety advice I can give is to dive within your limitations. Know your limits and stay well within them. 50% of your limits. How do you measure your limits? Well, your maximum limit is when you pass out. You don't want to find that out because that means you won't be diving tomorrow. And I guess this is another message is that be patient. Just because you started diving a year ago doesn't mean you're going to be ready to dive with someone who's been fishing for 15 or 20 years. It takes a long time to get to depth, to be able to fish at depth, and to do so safely. I guess the biggest rule of thumb that I'd, ha I'd have is that if you can't dive to the bottom, work around or at least lie on the bottom for 10 or 15 seconds, and then swim up to the surface and be comfortable in doing so at every part of the dive, then you're out of your depth. You're beyond your limits and you're asking for an accident. A dive almost never goes exactly as you think it will and according to plan. If you push yourself to your limits right from the word go, you've got no energy towards the end of the dive. You might find the best spot later on in the day and because you pushed yourself early, you can't fish it productively or you could put yourself in a compromising or a dangerous situation. And if the surf picks up while you're out there, you haven't got the energy to fight the current to get back in to shore and then to fight through a surf to get back on shore. It could be really dangerous. Another really important bit of advice I have is to always dive with a mate. Two of you in the water adds to safety and in my experience diving as a pair 
you'll actually shoot more fish than if two guys went individually in the same area. Especially in dirty water, as one's coming up off the bottom, you can communicate to your buddy and let him know if there's fish down there, should you keep swimming, move just a little bit further forward. There's also the added safety bonus, that if anything should happen to one of you, your mate's there looking out, ready to help. Worst case scenario, you actually have a blackout or a samba and you need someone there holding you above the water so you can continue your diving career. A quick word on spear gun safety. Spear guns are made up of five major components. A handle, a barrel, a spear, a rubber and a muzzle. A rubber is used to propel the spear, which is loaded back onto the notch, out of the gun once the trigger is pulled. Modern spear guns tend to come with a safety. Safety should never be relied on. The only safe spear gun is a gun pointed in a safe direction and unloaded. And we always use a tip to protect the spear, but also to stop it from being jabbed into anything else that you don't want. And remember, never enter or exit the water with a loaded spear gun. A simple knock could set it off. And by the way, pointing a spear gun at someone in anger or even as a joke oh, mate, take it easy. is a criminal offence. Just like using a gun or a knife, you could be charged by the police and even sent to prison. Spearfishing from the shore is a, an important part of diving in Australia and although you can run into a few problems in the ocean, um, a lot of people have, their, have most of their difficulties uh, entering and exiting the water. What you've got to pay attention to when you're jumping off the rocks is a safe entry and exit point, know your tides, know the weather conditions so that you're not going to get caught out by the swell coming up during the day. When you're uh, in the water, you've got to have an alternative point to exit from so if the swell picks up while you're in the water you've got a safe place to get out. A few things that I use when I'm jumping in is I'll uh, have my gear prepared before I get to the water's edge so I'll clean my face mask, have my uh, rig cord wrapped up on my gun with my float attached. When I get to the water's edge I'll put the float and gun in the water and quickly get my fins on. So let's go over the safety tips we've covered one by one. Forget the heavy breathing stuff from the movies. Relax breathing, like what you naturally do, is what really works. Remember to have the right gear, especially a float and flag. Always put a tip on the spear gun and never point it at anyone, even if it's unloaded. Always fish with a mate. Know your limits. Study the conditions. The weather, the tide and swell. Figure out your entry and exit points carefully. And remember, never turn your back to the swell. Equalise before any discomfort. Don't load up on weights and remember to check your buoyancy. What about a knife in case you need to cut yourself loose? Be ready in case of emergency with some basic gear and have a plan for this instance. If your dive buddy's had a samba or blackout, make sure he doesn't dive for the rest of the day. And if you suspect your dive buddy has inhaled water, seek medical assistance. Make sure you have your mobile ready to dial the emergency number if the person's recovery is slow and you need proper care. Triple O is now the only emergency number for both landlines and all mobile phone carriers. What about CPR? Your knowing how to give CPR could mean the difference between life and death for a mate. Try St John's, the Red Cross or Dan, Divers Alert Network for inquiries about these courses or finding info on CPR. Think about this. No fish is worth your life. These few tips will keep you spearfishing safely. 
there's more info available over the internet, dive shops, your local spearfishing club, and the USFA has this great publication, Guide to Spearfishing in New South Wales. I look forward to seeing you down there.